Hi, Jeremy. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's not allowing me to turn my video on. Somebody still has me shut down. I can hear Josh, but I can't see. Yeah, it's, there we go. There you go. That works. So Jeremy, Tron and I were the only ones in the green room. So uh, you can you can beat up whoever or send Christina, send Christina on them. And meanwhile, we'll, we'll talk about stuff if that, if that works. <laughs> Um, so this, this is the rise of the alts panel, uh, and um, notwithstanding a couple of vacancies, uh, I'm Josh Lawler, and I uh, approach things very much from a legal and regulatory side, uh, as well as uh, business models and practicality. We have here also uh, what I, I would say is a good friend, uh, Tron Black, uh, and Tron has led the Ravencoin project, uh, is uh, quite the technologist, uh, and uh, knows enough regulatory to uh, give me a headache or two during a, a debate. Um, it would be very dangerous for myself, probably. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's enough that hopefully we can carry the hour, and I think we, we can, certainly. Um, so, you know, to start us off, and I guess I'm grabbing the mod moderator spot, but Tron, you want to just tell us a little bit about Ravencoin, because Ravencoin obviously is an alt. It's a top 50 coin, I think, uh, and uh, you've done some wonderful things, so just give everybody a little Thanks. flavor. Sure, yeah. Uh, so the thing that distinguishes, so it would be considered an alt if you say alternative to Bitcoin. Uh, it was a code fork of Bitcoin originally, launched on Bitcoin's ninth birthday. Uh, and then about eight months after that, we added an asset layer. So we built in kind of the best of uh, multi-chain, counterparty, uh, multi uh, uh, open assets, et cetera. We took the best of those and put that capability in. And then we also linked it to uh, IPFS so that you can store data tied to uh, tokens and tied to token transfers and uh, tied to token uh, issuances. Uh, and so I'm actually giving a talk on that uh, tomorrow. All right. Um, and, and, <laughs> cool. But there was no, there was no, uh, no fundraising for it, no ICO, no pre-mine, that kind of thing. It just started off, people started mining it, uh, people were made aware of it uh, through Bruce Fenton. Uh, former executive director of, of Bitcoin uh, Foundation, and so he kind of let everybody know, and it kind of launched that way. So, so in terms of the rise of Ravencoin, I like that sound bite. The rise of Ravencoin, <laughs> yeah. um, the flight of the Ravencoin. Um, what do you see as you know the keys to widespread adoption? Yeah, so it launched into an environment of kind of the end of the ICO era. Uh, so the ICOs. Uh, we're, we're went crazy kind of during that 2017 uh, time. And, and we were, uh, well, not me specifically, but, but Bruce is, is also a, uh, has, you know, has licenses for stock broker and things like that. So he was aware that some of these things may not be totally kosher in the, in the U.S. And so he was very, very cognizant of that. And so we, we launched, instead of raising money, instead of saying buy these tokens, start that or, or pre-mining some. Uh, which means it launched on a very kind of uh, legal platform, right? So it, because you know, we hadn't sold anything to anyone. Uh, so that really helped. And uh, you know, I credit, credit Bruce uh, for that and that foresight. But um, that, yeah, that was, that was kind of its big thing. And then also very community driven, uh, you know, because there were, the incentives were different. Uh, I think that helped it out. And so uh, there's a pretty big community around it. And it's been Fair so but going forward from right now, from this moment, yeah. forget about the securities law stuff. Let's just say it's all, yeah. that's all good. What's it going to take to drive Ravencoin to the top 10? Uh, so, so I think uh, adoption. Uh, so people sure. using it for what it was intended for, which is to uh, issue assets. And there's, uh, you know, tying in just a little bit of the legal. There are some tools we added to it about a year and a half, two years into it uh, that allow it to be, uh, easier to issue on it legally and have those out there. So one of the problems if, with issuance is if you issue and then kind of let it just fly around and it is a security, uh, then there's the stuff comes back legally on the issuer. And we have, <laughs> all right, we'll talk about that. But the, the, uh, um, so we, we built some stuff to kind of keep it from being able to fly around willing, by fly around, I mean, being able to transfer to anybody. Uh, without knowing who they are and that kind of thing, which seems to be a right. thing in security. But, it, but, but the actual, I mean, I'm, and I'm trying to drill down on the actual use of it though, for its yeah. intended purpose, which is not yeah. being a security or financial yeah. product or yeah. currency really. Yeah. Um, you know, 
I guess to, to lead it a little bit, the, the marketing and rollout of any project is, is in my mind always the hardest piece of this. And I know you guys yeah. have had a really solid grassroots effort. Yeah. Do you, do you see kind of a, a solid growth curve coming up? And once we get that, we'll, we'll start applying this towards other alts and that's the, the direction I'm going to Yeah. Uh, so we're disadvantaged a little bit and then we don't have a big bucket of money because there was no ICO fundraising thing. Uh, so a lot of this is people understanding that it is, more like Bitcoin, right? It's people, it's totally permissionless. People don't have to ask us, talk to us or anything to use it. And they can issue a token uh, with, with right now, you know, right somewhere less than $15 worth of Raven. They have their own token, one to 21 billion, and they can use that and it moves securely just like uh, Bitcoin does, but they own the token, right? So what they do with the token, it can be a gift card. It can be you know, a, a prepaid something. It could be a security. It could be a share of an item. It, you know, there's all kinds of things you can apply it to. Um, but those, some of those things have more legal and you're aware of that probably more than anyone. Um, but, but that's, uh, so I get into it because I need to explain the differences and, and things like that. All right. So you can see why Tron is, is a, is a dear friend because anybody who mentions legal that many times from telling them not to is, uh, is definitely okay in my book. <laughs> um, and Steve Kwan has joined us. Uh, I see. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. Yes. Hi, how are you? Good, good. We're doing well. We're, we're partying on. Um, I, was, I was just about to launch into one of my favorite topics, which of course is use case. Um, and, you know, I, I, I am an attorney. I spend a lot of time doing securities law. I've done that for 25 years. Um, but I'm also a futurist. And, you know, my, my real love and passion for this space is about what it can do. Um, and what I like to, to tell people to kind of illustrate the breadth of it is that if you think back to the dawn of existence of people, the guy in the cave with the mammoth stakes and the buries is a centralized ledger. Um, and there was no alternative then and there has been no alternative up to now. And all of our paradigms, socioeconomic, religious, government, they are all built on the idea of ledgers being centralized or trust requiring trusted intermediaries or double bookkeeping or something of that nature. And that paradigm can now shift. And I don't want to say it's shifting because I, I think it ends up in the middle, hopefully. Um, but that's, that's incredible if you think about it. And that drives use cases. Uh, so, you know, Tron's been good enough to give us some of the Ravencoin use cases, but there's other use cases out there. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Chainlink fanboy, so I'll scream out for them. They've got an Oracle use case in a very defined market. Um, somebody earlier today, I think it was Maddie Greenspan, mentioned Chili's, uh, and Chili's is doing something called Radical Fan Engagement and is very active working with that. And full disclosure, Chili's is a client of our firm. Um, uh, another one that's also a client is VeChain, uh, who's doing uh, a lot in the um, supply chain space and all of these are tradable tokens that are listed on exchanges uh some in, in the case of v chain i'm not sure they're in the us yet I'm working on that uh but they're they're not only traded they have to be traded because the use cases require third-party liquidity outside of their system otherwise the incentive is behind people running the infrastructure on the blockchain don't work uh, so, you know, I never going to say for everything, I don't like absolutes, but for 90% of the valid use cases out there, if you don't have the ability to trade it on an exchange, use case doesn't function. Um, so when you talk about the rise of the alts, which is the topic here, um, I personally don't think of it in context of alts versus Bitcoin, um, because I think that they're completely different things. They have a shared aspect that they are distributed ledger technology in most cases in certain ones like Ripple and Stellar that people think of, not really necessarily even, even that. Um, but it's, it's almost like saying that, you know, your Formula One race car is, you know, the same thing as a horse and buggy because there's wheels on it or the same thing as a shopping cart because there's wheels on it. They're, they're different. So the rise of the alts to me is the rise of the use case on DLT. Um, and, uh, I'm very, very much in favor of, of that concept. So I'm, I guess, proselytizing. I'll be quiet now and, and let somebody else who's brilliant here uh, discuss. And I see we've got Adrian Ashley who has joined us as well. Can you so. hear me? Thank you. Josh, yes, we can. Hi, this is uh, Stephen Kwan. I'm on my phone because I was having some technical difficulty, but 
I would like to commend Sean Black too. I think that Ravencoin is a great project and they've had tremendous success. So my kudos to you. Now you. I would ask a question to, I guess the group and it's my theory of what the use case is for many, many, many tokens. Prior to, I guess, really nine, 10 years ago, I would say that 90 some percent of businesses were started or organizations, ideas by two means, equities, equity raise or debt raise. Now, in my opinion, there is a third, which is a token raise. And I think that it's worth noting, like Ripple Labs, probably some of the smartest guys in the room. Chainlink or smart contract, Chainlink, the organization, my kudos to them too. I mean, from seemingly an unheard of product to one of the most valuable and viable projects out there. And with those two, I guess the one note I would have is that by me being a Wall Street person, of the values just derived from a market. Like if we think a token's trading for $10, that's what it's worth today. If, if it's worth that tomorrow, I couldn't tell you. But I think a lot of the smaller projects where it's, I don't know, they want to be a website for coins or they want to be a website for clothing on blockchain, you know, just some out of the box things. They're issuing a token to further their organization. So I look at the major use case currently of a lot of tokens, especially those that are, you know, 100% pre-mined and just issued by the organization as fundraising. I mean, mm -hmm. essentially I could raise, if I sell something to start an organization, I am telling people I'm going to sell oranges to start my orange juice company and that's acceptable. So I just have, I'm not, sure if everyone is really clear that owning xrp you don't own ripple labs they're very different entities and rip xrp is a valuable token you know as per the market just like link is a very valuable token as per the market but by buying those tokens i don't have a say in their organization unless i had such a large position that i almost you know came across with more of a threatening manner, which I don't really advocate, but <laughs> I just wanted to get others' opinion on that. Sure, and there's so much there to unpack. It's, it's amazing, actually. Um, the first thing I should say is I, I, I do own Link. Uh, I'm not paid by them. They're not a client, though yeah, I definitely would love them to be. Uh, I don't currently own Ripple, uh, and I mention that because it's great to contrast the two uh, for purposes of furthering what you just said, Steve. Um, so, you know, both of those are non-equity asset type tokens. Um, the difference is that Chainlink as a business has set up tokenomics where their token is required for what they're doing. And they've set up a supply and demand tokenomics where there's a finite number of Chainlink that will ever be in existence against a growing demand for Chainlink for that business. So therefore, as the business grows, the amount of chain link gets more valuable. The cost in chain link for the business gets less link, even though from a dollar perspective, it probably stays consistent. And that's a common supply and demand dynamic. Ripple Labs, on the other hand, has products that they pitch, and in fact, their primary product that don't actually even use the XRP token. So, you know, combine that with the pre-mine status and the fact that they've got a ton sitting in the vault being released over 50 years and from a pure fundamental, if you can use that perspective uh, in, in token land, um, Ripple is a really horrible uh, item to hold and Chainlink, sorry, <laughs> forgive me. Um, Chainlink is a really you. Don't, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. I've just never heard anybody say that like out loud, like a, officially. You know, we kind yeah. of and this is not investment advice. It's not no. legal advice. They're not doing anything illegal, nope. although maybe the FTC could disagree. Uh, but um, 
none, nonetheless, uh, you know, that, that's a big deal. And, you know, getting back to what Steve is saying, you know, some of these are equity. Some of them are financial products. And our firm has done some tokens that are, you know, actual shares of stock on a Wyoming uh, electronic share ledger or Delaware electronic share ledger. And I think if you give us 10 years, every share of stock is going to be on a DLT share ledger. Let's hope. This makes sense. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, but, you know, other ones are not. There's commodity backed tokens. So, you know, we've done tokens that are represented by bars of precious metal in a vault, or for that matter, Tether is sitting with, you know, ostensibly dollars uh, in a vault someplace. Um, because and, they, you know, they like the value of their tether to go down as inflation rises and the value of the dollar goes down. That's, that sounds like a great tokenomics thing to me. Yeah, well, you know, it serves their, well, I mean, their use case is that it's pegged to a dollar, though. So right. can't can't mess with that too much. And then That's there's the other ones. Can, I, can I interject on that? Please, I, you need to, because otherwise I, I won't shut up. <laughs> so on tether... Now, I'm by no means an expert, and I do hold some for disclosure. I guess there's two notes that I would say. Every time I send it from my Exodus wallet, it's required to have some Ethereum in there. So I guess that's for those that may not be familiar with that. If you want to send Tether from an Exodus wallet, you need to have Ethereum. So... Mm -hmm. When I hear what's the use of Ethereum, well, I always have to have some on hand, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars is irrelevant. But I guess the other point I was going to make about Tether on their website is that their, the Tether token is backed fully by USD and it's accounts receivables and other loans made to various organizations. And it said, this isn't anything hidden. It, it says it right on their website. So I guess when we see three letters, BTC, on this call, most would assume I'm talking about Bitcoin. But there are people with those initials or USD. We assume US dollars, but nowhere in the Tether website or prospectus, does it actually say US dollars? So I'm not, I, I think Tether is a great idea. I do have ownership and do, you know, buy and sell stable quote unquote coins. But essentially when I hear what gives Bitcoin value, what gives Tether value, the fact that I can exchange it for a value. It, it doesn't, if Bitcoin's a dollar or it's a million dollars, if that's where it traded, that's the value for yeah. some. So that yeah, yeah the, the the market bearing is the value is is one of those things that it's impossible to argue with that the, you know the value of something is what you know unaffiliated third parties will will buy and sell it for an arm's length transaction. However, looking at things a little differently, um, the reason that you need to have ether for your tether transaction is because you need some gas because tether is trading on the ether blockchain and and ether as the you know the native token is kind of like the coal. And I use that specifically because it is a little bit of a dirty asset as, that should be outdated. Uh, but at least in 2.0. Don't know about 2.0 no, for now. No, 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 no. I have to object. The thing yep. about Ethereum is that it's widespread. It's yep. easy to get. Yep. And if we are going to have any kind of mainstream adoption, then that's what we need. We either need projects that have native tokens that are like, I have several yes. that we're producing that are actually useful. We're doing some blockchain-based PPE transactions. So if you don't have the token, you don't own the asset for commodities uh, because you know there's only you know, 5 trillion 3M maps. Yeah, my, and I, and I, like I said, you're gonna do that. It's coal, right? like I said, coal is, is good. Coal is useful. It works for its purpose, but, but there's the, other things that I think are gonna be well, we need we need a stable Ethereum for gas. That would help. I'm sorry yeah. when somebody comes up with the next Crypto Kitties, uh, we're all screwed again because gas prices are forty five dollars for a five dollar cup of coffee. Yeah, that no, exactly. Work, right, and that's that's why Wax built its own chain. In fact, um, and Bill Quigley's a, a friend, and I remember him bitching about the uh, the issues with the the gas and the miners on Ethereum. Exactly. However, getting, getting back to, uh, you know, the, the demonstration, as much as I just maybe insulted Ether by calling it coal, um, Bitcoin is vapor. 
Um, you know, Bitcoin <laughs> oh, was developed. Natural gas. <laughs> no, it's not because all right, it was developed for a purpose, which was to be a medium of exchange. Right. That use case is a fail. Um, why? You know why? Because it takes too long and it costs too much. It's never going to have transactions per second sufficient. And but it was never intended to buy a cup of coffee. No, no, I get that. But the thing is, it's it intended, not. If you yeah. saw these transactions that I'm doing and they have to wire and then the wire goes to Hong Kong and then it goes to Vietnam and it takes three days, I could do that on Bitcoin. You can. Bitcoin. You can do it on a lot of other things also, though, is the point. And, you know, the store of value argument, everything is a store of value. It's whatever people decide is a store of value, which is what Steve was saying. So if you knock out medium of exchange because other things can do it more efficiently and you knock out store of value, Bitcoin is kind of vapor. Trans, there, trans, gotta interject yeah. there again, is Mr. Lawler. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, but I would say that from my knowledge in markets, when I remember two years ago, the quote unquote white paper, which is not a legal document. No. Nope. People want to be the next Bitcoin. Okay, well, don't be the next Bitcoin, be the next ABC coin. But what do people seemingly really, really, really want? And why is Bitcoin required? Bitcoin is liked because of its liquidity. You can, generally speaking, trade it into 99.9% .9 of other tokens and or cryptocurrencies. And it essentially has a stranglehold on much of this industry or you know space because the token you know most tokens are not as widely accepted as bitcoin mm -hmm. so when i want to trade abc coin and get cash out i need to trade that for bitcoin and the yeah. more projects that come the less bitcoin there is for all of them which is why my belief is there should be some entity to trade things into that is just a mechanism on exchanges where the Bitcoin can still be finite, but it doesn't put a stranglehold on this industry. Mr. Right. Tron Black, would you like to answer? Yeah, go ahead, Tron. Yeah. I can answer, but we'd be here all day. I, I would just say that, that, that Bitcoin is providing, even if it provides that store of value, if you can swap things into it everywhere, right, so that you can't shut down one point, it becomes uh, useful, whereas all the alts become the medium of exchange, right? Because you can transfer those without overloading the chain, et cetera. So I think it, it, it does provide that, that value and that base, that anchor. Almost like if you said, hey, I'm going to have this coin be anchored to gold in the vault. The vault mm -hmm. doesn't need to move, but those tokens can. And you can do the same thing with Bitcoin, where it's providing the value and you're just linking to it through tons of exchanges. And I think I probably said mostly the same thing Steve said, but... Uh, but I do think it provides that value. Right. And, and I get that that's the, the Raven coin use case there uh, as, as well uh, on the Bitcoin fork. And, and that is useful. I don't see people doing that with Bitcoin as much. But Steve, you're, you're pointing out the oh, trader's oh. perspective, which is, which is great. And it's very much the now. Um, but, you know, if tomorrow, uh, you know, you had uh, Tezos suddenly become super liquid and everybody was following it, Bitcoin could be forgotten. What I agree 100%. Do, right. With the use case perspective, though, the idea with use cases, and I'll pick up Link again because I just love it so darn much. There's no replacement for Link in the Oracle system. It's Link. Go ahead, Adrian. You're, you're I, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry I was late to the party, but we are talking about the rise of the alts, right? In order yes. to rise, it's not just going to be the handful of traders who are killing it right now in crypto. It's got to have mainstream adoption and we've got to have more people participating and yep. understanding it, right? So yep. wouldn't alts that drive consumer adoption, i.e. naughty dating app for good girls that gets women laid, puts consent on the blockchain, 300 million potential consumers who know nothing about crypto using it right away. That's, an alt, that's a use case. The Absolutely. snap nerd use case is my favorite because you need the tokens and it drives the whole system and it keeps all your credentials going and you literally show up, scan your code, boom, you can go to work instead of taking three weeks to revalidate your tetanus shot. So there, there are so many use cases for alts. It's, it's nearly unlimited. And that's actually where I think the rise is going to come from. I don't think the rise is going to come from anything we've actually already seen yet. I mean, other than 
mine. Crypto kitties. Maybe. <laughs> I, by the way, I, I'm not going to repeat what you said because invariably I'll get sued for it, but I agree with you. Yes. Um, entirely. Well, apparently yes and no is too ambiguous, so we needed to make a token to solve that problem for people. <laughs> well, I mean, at least to record it hysterically for posterity on a you know immutable right. and transparent setup. Yeah. And Mr. Um, Waller, Adrian, Mr. Black, I have a question for everyone. Yes. yes. In 50 years when, or whatever, in, in 100 years when Bitcoin is fully mined, will, and, and let's just say the price was still where it is, whatever, 10,000 bucks. So it oh, was a great investment. 100 years? 100 million. Well, whenever, whenever the last <laughs> one is, is mined, we'll just say, in, just say in 10 years, hypothetically, all okay. 21 million are out and the price is still $10,000. Okay. How does this industry grow? Bitcoin? I don't think it does. Yes. Bitcoin, Bitcoin doesn't. Bitcoin is your IRA. It sits there and provides a foundation that yeah. everything else kind of builds on. And I think it's more like, it's more like a cult and the OG and that, you know, here's this, can I swear, unfuckwithable ledger of what actually happened. I think, I think Bitcoin ends up being the crank steam engine of the car. Yes. If, you, if you kind of look at it that way, I mean, you know, I agree entirely with what you're what you're saying, Adrian. I mean, the yeah. use case drives everything. And if you really everything. want to look at adoption, it's going to be when people don't need to even know something's DLT. That's exactly what we're doing. We have 20 projects that they will never actually know. And I, I tell people all the time, they're like, well, I don't understand blockchain, so I'm not going to use it. I'm like, you don't understand email and you use it every day. You don't know how your text messages go through. You certainly don't know what an IPv6 is. You have no clue how it works. That's actually the key to mass adoption. And that is what's going to drive the, the rise. Absolutely. Of and you, you did come late to the party. So give yourself a shameless plug and tell people who you're with. Hi, I'm Adrienne Ashley. I'm the founder of Lolly. It's a naughty dating app for good girls that gets women laid because we need safety, security, and certainty to say yes, even to dinner, because we would rather stay home and watch Netflix because we know that's going to be a rocking good time. So we match people based on sexual compatibility. That way, you know, when you go out, if things work out, if there's chemistry, uh, you're not going to be disappointed. And then we so there's Netflix the and chill. Chain. Pardon me. So Netflix and chill is a popular saying. I uh, well, it, we were supposed yes. to launch Valentine's Day and then I saw COVID coming and I went, ah, crap. So I moved video speed dating up the roadmap quite a bit. So we're still working on that. But we should have video speed dating done before wave two hits and everybody else is back in quarantine. So Adrian, I agree with you that, yes, yeah, something that's used that's on blockchain, yeah. like a, a blockchain, I, I think, like you said, people use things and when they don't know what it is, it's like, you're just using it. You know, people don't ask how a credit card works. They just use it. How does PayPal right. work? They just use it. So I agree with you. A hundred percent. I guess my question is for those that are coins and or tokens that trade on a public exchange with the current peg to Bitcoin. So if every, if there's no trades in any pair, but Bitcoin rises $10,000, did every project deserve to double or if Bitcoin drops in half, does every project deserve to lose 50%? Because under the current exchange metrics, that's how it works. So that's what I, I guess, that's what I would yeah, ask each of you. Steve, that's market inefficiency though. Yeah, that's- that I'm, I'm not actually aware of anything that is quote, legally pegged to Bitcoin. Um, so, you that's know- just the, That's just the default lazy person swap. Yeah, it's sentiment. not that you're a lazy person. I know you. No, but I'm just saying, that, but that's, that's a, how that ends up happening. Anybody can swap anything for anything. It doesn't have to always be Bitcoin. And right. No, I just think hear me out, though. So Bitcoin's 100 million Satoshis. Everyone agree? No, because yeah. I can't do math that fast, but I'll go with I was you on gonna it. Say, how many commas is that? It's 18 decimal points, whatever that is. All right. So just hear me. So it's 100 million Satoshis. Okay. So right now, uh, a thousand satoshis is ninety cents. Ten thousand is nine dollars. Hundred thousand ninety, so on and so forth. Right. So if a project right now trades or doesn't have any trade in it, and Bitcoin drops, its U.S. dollar price drops. 
It's it just ha- it doesn't have well, but, to. But if there's, no, to, I agree if there's no training, 100%. you can't trade it. There's Listen, no liquidity. It's, it's not going to drop. It's not going to drop if it's an STO. You're only talking about vaporware that hasn't been produced and created its own value. I, I would say token with the use no. case and avoid the STO tag, which is loaded with all kinds of junk. Well, well you yeah. were saying shares of, a, of something, and that's definitely a security. Oh, if, it's share, if it's shares, there's, yeah, if it's a that's financial what I'm product. Saying. It's, it's that's definitely a security. So if it's a security, that's not tied to Bitcoin at all. That's tied to the equity and the value and the production yeah. of the actual yeah. project, yeah. right? Yeah. That's not tied to Bitcoin at all. So Unless it's, it's a derivative, but one, yeah. Right, it's only... Right. And don't talk to me about derivatives and stable coins. I'm like, here, a uh, like, question for buckets of cash, all different kinds of cash. Why do we need a token that does buckets of cash, all the same cash? You, the whole point of crypto, the whole point of all of these different tokens was to de, de, um, cut. Uh, <laughs> I have not had enough. Your <laughs> <laughs> uh, detach, detach us from the central banks. And, and get rid of, you know, seven white guys in a closed room with no windows. It's already been bug swept and they decide how much the price of bread is. We want to decide, we the people want to decide Ooh. how much these are worth. All right. So hold, hold on a second there, <laughs> representative of the people. Um, you know, people, <laughs> people have asked me before, how do you regulate digital assets? And I look at them like they're insane because the real question is like, how do you regulate paper? And the right. answer is, well, I don't know. Is it toilet paper? Is it a share of IBM stock? Is it a share of IBM stock I wipe my rear with? I mean, there's a lot of different paper and there's a lot of digital assets. So while certainly the viewpoint you just expressed is a viewpoint, um, I don't know that everybody shares it quite that way. Uh, I'm a use case junkie, no question. I love it, use cases, but that was but, my- well, I get it, I get it. But the idea though is not all of the use cases are about avoiding the seven white guys in a room. Thank you very much. But I know, uh, my, but my point was, I, okay, so this is actually coming from a little, a little PTSD of an investor um, presentation I had to attend that I was uh, sitting through and, uh, and people would ended up at the end of the thing. They didn't go and talk to them. They went, came and talked to me because I was asking pointed, pointed questions. Like what, what is the value? Why should we give you all this money if we can literally do the exact same thing in your use cases? Simply, you tokenized a basket of, of money. Right? Oh, I agree if that's the use currencies. case. And, and there's already a, a basket of those currencies already trading on every stock market in the world. Why would I give you money that you then have to spend a ton of money to get onto a decent exchange for me to be able to do the same thing but more complicated when I already have an app on my phone that can do everything and it's near instantaneous anyway. So what? Th- that's what bothers me about stable coins, right? But but, but you're you're in the U.S., so you have you get some of these uh, apps that could, that are you're already connected. There's a ton of unbanked people, and all of a sudden right. this token, which is linked, yes, it's linked in kind of the Western banking system. But now it moves around just electronically, kind of decentralized, you know, running on, like, like Steve said, on Ethereum, okay. but it also- I'll give yeah. you that. That's a, that is a great use case for a stable coin. Yeah, I mean, I personally have always thought Facebook's Libra is really targeted more at the, you know, kind okay. of Oceania Pacifica region where they're huge in Indonesia and the Philippines and there's a need for that. And it, you know, allows people to tie into what was a basket and made much more sense then. And it's now just dollars of currencies. Right. Um, although I think there's still an, e- anyways, there's, there's an EU version of Libra that's still a basket of currencies, um, Saba or something like that. All right. Anyways. Well, we were supposed to have one single global currency. I was like, kind of actually excited about that. I didn't like that all the partners were the big corporations. I would have yeah. liked the partners to have been, you know, just the treasury of each country's yeah. money, rather so, than so- like the, the central banks. Yeah. I mean, not, not to take it politically, but, uh, you know, one thing that's depressing and one thing that's outstanding. Yeah. One thing that's depressing, governments are not going to let go of the ability to regulate by economic governance. It's right. just not gonna happen. Um, one thing that is, I think, wonderful is that there is at least a global standard developing for KYC. Uh, and, okay. AML. <laughs> and we can get the entire world to agree on any one thing. Um, yeah. that, is, that is amazing. And you know, as much as people hate the travel rule and the financial action task force out of the G20, it's really amazing. Think about yeah. this for a second. We're all going to actually get along on something. Well, this was this was awesome. I, I a part of the the central nucleus of our application is actually a digital ID, 
And uh, we didn't finish it in time, but Global ID launched. And I went, oh, that's exactly what I was just doing. You can put everything together. You know who you are. You're proved who you are. Everything is there. And you just literally scan it. Yep, their passport was already cleared, whatever. They're all full KYC AML done. And, and the key with that was that was how we were going to remove the bots and the predators and the ghosts and the stalkers and, and be able to get everyone accountable and personally be responsible. But it's in a dating app, so nobody really knows. They don't understand the, you know, that this is their sovereignty. And we could never take that ID away from them. That was the other piece of it. You can create your ID and you can keep your ID and you can use it forever. Because uh, right. with Facebook, I use the Facebook login. And then I'll ask a question about 5G. Question. I didn't make a statement. I asked a question. I asked a follow-up question in a comment. And I said, this said that they were going to have the toxicology reports back in eight weeks. Have we seen that report? Boom. I clicked post and it said, boom, You violation, you're banned for a week. Well, now I can't use my Facebook app to log in anywhere for a week. They've liter they literally control my identity. And so our whole point was we wanted to give you that ability to have your own identity and then we created a whole bunch of other follow-on apps where you could still use that same exact login mm -hmm. all right everyone we have about four minutes and since we have a key person of a key project mr. i would tron. like to ask mr tron black <laughs> if he would take a couple minutes and tell the folks about I mean, Ravencoin is definitely it, one of the stories. We, we, did where... up we did it up front, dude. You weren't we, here we yet. Did, we, did, we did a little <laughs> bit of that. Oh, um... okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. I was trying to give you the plug time. I, 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 thought I, that... I, I wasn't here. I'd like to hear it. So <laughs> I, hear it again. I, appre I appreciate that. So, I mean, if you want to find out more about it, it's it's open source. There's no Ravencoin company. There's There was no pre-mine, no ICO. Uh, Medici Ventures backs some of the developers, but it's mostly just an open source project. Anybody can contribute. People are from around the world. Uh, you can go to ravencoin.org to find out what it's about. You yeah. can create your own tokens on top of it. So it's, it's a token pl asset platform. Nice. Uh, and then also ties into IPFS. So you can do uh, data and metadata about every transaction, about the tokens, et cetera, which is immutable. And I'll, I'll be giving a talk tomorrow on, on that aspect of tying a token to immutable uh, communication. So if we can do IPFS, does that mean that I can have things tagged like videos and where they're geolocated yes. and where they're uploaded? Because that's what people, we're doing for uh, first person media. First people person are media. already putting in, putting on blogs that are censorship resistant. People have already put in political videos, uh, yeah. things like that, because they can't be taken down, right? There, as long as yeah. one person is pinning them and holding them, you know, maybe potentially in another country, they'll, they'll be available. Uh, and through like Cloudflare and things like that too. Yeah. So it's not a, and the more people that watch it, the better it distributes. So it's also like a content delivery network. Okay. IPFS, this is IPFS. IPFS, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, we, but, we love uh, Tron. Raven, Ravencoin's linked with IPFS in the sense that I, you put IPFS hashes into it, so they can't change, link to a token, and then you can get to the data. Yeah, so it's kind of all built together. Yeah. And, and for everything that you upload, is that one token? What's the pricing uh, so, on that? So, the, so if you create a token, that costs 500 Raven, and then, but you can create from one to 21 billion of them, divisible up to eight decimal places. But then every transfer, you can include an IPFS, and that's like a tiny, tiny fraction of a penny for each transaction. Oh, yeah, nice. Like, yeah. And then, and how much is Raven trading for right now? Like, say I wanted to make yeah. 100 billion of my own token. Yeah, you, so make $15, well, it would cost you about $15. Raven's trading at about two cents-ish. So, so somewhere and, in the- So that sounds like a really good investment to me for everybody out there who has some <laughs> kind of alt idea that they want to do that's going to be yeah. actually price conscious they, and they yeah. want to start something, but they've got a good use case. Yeah. Because now, now will that token always be tied to the price of Raven or can, or, or like say I come up with a really good idea because I have those like every 10 minutes. And, yeah, and so the, come up with something that goes viral. Can my token go to a hundred while Raven's still at two cents? Yes, your token. You set the value of your token. You own it, all of them, right? However yep. many you made, you yep. can tell it it's reissuable. Mean you can make more, or you can yep. say it's locked so that people know oh, there will only be a million of these. So you get the choice when you create it. You can yep. also make it reissuable, reissue, reissue, and then lock it, right? And say okay, now that's the max. And then okay. forever it'll be locked. And uh, then but. The hey value is the token is up to you. Yeah. And, so and sorry, then, we have to Jeremy, cut this Jeremy, we're not done yet. <laughs> this is the end. We're going to have to be. This is exciting. Uh, <laughs> so.
stopping the panels just to keep on time. I know last time we were behind 30 minutes and it really messed things up. So with that said, thank you guys. Incredible panel. That was highly entertaining. Thank you, Adrian, <laughs> Ashley, and Josh. And we're going to have to create our own podcast with you two. You guys are incredible personalities. Steve Kwan, Tron Black, you guys did an incredible job too. Um, if you guys want to learn more about all the things that they do, please uh, go seek them out or message them in the chat. But uh, thanks again, guys. Thank all you. Right. Thank you, everybody. Pleasure. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.